Well, what is up, everybody? All my kobolds out there, we hit our million. We did it. We got it. We're going to be talking to Wolfgang today about the idea of what's next, what's to come. I have a little news at the top of the hour here for everybody. We obviously are going to Gen Con, and we just found out something very special today. But before we do that, I want to show you a sale we have going on, and we'll get into all the other juicy stuff that I know you are all here for. So let's go over the info board. Let's not waste any time. Um, I want you all to see something pretty awesome. So we are currently running a sale for all the Ebon Tide stuff. This is your Sirenscape, your Foundry licenses, pretty much all of them, and Ebon Tides is on sale. If you're looking for that shadowy Fey Realm, and you may remember I ran a game for Cobalt Press. That's how this whole endeavor between me and them started. I ran Ebon Tides for them. So if you wanted something that's dark, but still kind of fey like like twisted fey is what I would say. You want to walk the shadow roads and find out if you uh, get sick from the things that go on there? Check it out. It's a really good set piece. Some, some really cool magical items in it. Uh, but all that is on sale. You can check that over on the site right now. Um, besides that, everybody, besides that, and I'm just going to leave, I'm going to leave this up because we should always have the Tales of the Valiant page up for what we're doing. Uh, we have had our warehouse move. We are finally open. Things are shipping. We are good. And then Wolfgang, I know you're in the background, so I'm going to ask this, the Toma Beast 2023 edition, is that shipping as well soon? So it hit the warehouse, and those who pre-ordered uh, should be getting it very shortly. So if you're looking for the remaster Tome of Beast, and remember, remember, Tales of the Valiant works with our other stuff. So this book is kind of like a really good first set dressing for you to use for your game. It's not hard to include these monsters with what's going on. I may even do one on how to build some fun Doom Pool stuff, as I'm doing for the show right now. So that's the top of the hour. That's my news. We're obviously here to talk about Kickstarter. And more than that, we obviously are here to talk about the deal that you can get with Kickstarter. And uh, let's uh, let's bring Wolfgang over and let's let's talk all the fun stuff. Hi, Wolfgang. Sure. How are you? Hey, hey. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm gonna fix. How your do you camera. think? I, it's just. Oh my God. We hit the million dollar mark. You did. Um, you did. I want to take it. the rest of the day off. Are I just you... want to party all the time. I'm. <laughs> Are you going yeah, to we're go? Good. Are you going to take the day off? No. You know I'm not. We're like in the last 48 hours of this thing, so we're just gonna power through questions, it. power through it, tell people what a good deal the one pledge level is in particular, and some of what we're planning. Um, you know, we've shared it here and there, but maybe not everybody's heard all the bits, because there's a lot in Tales of the Valiant, and it's hard to cover it all, so... I don't know. Yeah, it, it, try, I made a list. Week to week. <laughs> week to week I cover it. And every time I'm like, I forgot something else that's awesome that we should be talking about today. All right, I restarted yep. your camera. We did Cox Media Group uh, the other week, and they had a really odd camera set up. So I have to move you around so you look normal. Um, okay. We're good, though. And you sound good this week. Let's talk about that first. You have Let's a microphone. talk about that. I have a microphone, a beautiful <laughs> it's professional microphone. It's the same microphone. <laughs> Yes, only now it's set up properly. And it functions. As before before I, I apparently plugged it into a Pringles can and it didn't work that well. <laughs> oh, I don't Pringles know what I was doing can. before, but it's much better now. Uh, thanks, much Mr. Better. Wizard, for showing us how to make telephones out of Pringle cans and tomato soup cans. If you don't know who Mr. Wizard yes. is, look it up. That guy was part of my childhood. <laughs> yes. All that sort of magic stuff and uh, yeah so i sound better and i don't worry about cutting out and that's a relief yeah 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 you sound you sound normal you sound like the wolf gang yeah. we know you sound like the wolf gang that sits on panels and talks to people <laughs> all right i'm not down at the bottom of the well not down at the bottom of the well so we hit the million um i'm gonna bring yes. this over so we can see our lovely website stuff here um so let's talk about it. It's still growing. We, we, we're we're yes. only two. I can't turn away for two seconds. Um, mm -hmm. What do we want to talk about on here first? So obviously we have 52 or 51 hours to push and see what we can get and how many stretch goals we can unlock and what else we can do. Well, we ought to talk about the big, well, we hit several unlocks at a million, but the one everybody's talking about, we should talk about that one. And that's the GM screen. All right. right? So let's scroll down here. Uh, bum, 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 bum. It's at the 
I think there's a sample image, That's like fair. a mock-up version at the, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. So we did a so, four panel landscape. Four panel landscape yes. uh, on sturdy, it's gonna. It's not one of these flimsy pieces, like they're, it's solid, right? Is it like a book cover uh, material? It's like book cover material, it's a heavy stock. Uh, so it will hold up to some abuse, it won't blow over and you know, somebody walks by. Uh, it's solid. The art is um, is placeholder art there, but it is where <laughs> the art director got very excited because doing a four panel landscape isn't it's... something we get to do that often. No, two page spreads is all you get to see. Now he gets a four page spread. Right? So it's like, well, how many figures can we fit in there? And who are they? And what are the monsters? And there's been this whole lively discussion about at first we're like, well, wait, we won't get to a million. Do we really need to figure out what's we on sure it? sure do. And now it's like, yeah, we actually sure do. we do. So it's there's some really good stuff, good conversation around what that's going to look like. But mostly it's going to be really useful and it's included yeah. with every pledge for both books, right? If you're on the $99 two book pledge, you get the DM screen now because we hit that goal. Yeah. Or if you have the two book set for the limited edition, you just get the DM screen. Wilson so. says four panels. That's even more than three. It is! <laughs> oh my gosh, our counting skills. I, I Hey, do kobolds have? How many fingers do kobolds have? We have claws. How many claws do we have? <laughs> um, I mm, Ask the art director. Mark, um, <laughs> I I think it's pretty cool that we did landscape. I like landscape more so you can reach over it to still move things in front of you at the table. Also, yep. and this is just a tip for all my people who are streaming or running online, you lay it flat in front of you and you can use your mouse pad on the one side, and your mouse on the one side, but you can still see all your data. Yes. That's how I use my screen. I lay it flat and you can still use it, especially for like new games and things that I'm doing. So we right. obviously don't know everything is gonna go on the back because we're still deep in the design part. You can't design yep. the back of the screen till honestly the game's near completed. But yep. for the art, do you have a favorite screen in history? Oh, with art? I have all the favorite screens. I mean, uh, dating myself completely, but the AD and D Look, orange screen, right? <laughs> but that David Trampier dragon and the man at arms and the chainmail, and that was like the first screen I owned, and I'm, I still have it somewhere packed away, and I never use it anymore. Yeah. But it was not a landscape screen; it was it was the tall portrait three panel deal. Yep. Um, and we didn't know any better at the time. No one had done a landscape screen. No, no, landscapes didn't come around. There was a version I remember of D&D. &D. It was one of the box sets. It was the one that came with the folder with the, the mm -hmm. accordion files. And that had a yep. screen and it had the little hump in the middle because it was the paper oh, screen, right. like the thin cardboard yeah. ones. And that yeah, was landscape yeah. with a hump. I was like, you almost got it, man. We were this so close. close. So I had two of those because I worked at Walden Books and I cut the hump off of it so I can have oh, plans. Oh, right? You can do that. <laughs> uh, uh, that's... The other one I love, for years I used the Midgard campaign setting screen. Gee, I don't know why actually... you like that one. Well, right? Like, why? But it had the map on it as well as um, the Wasteland Dragon. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I like dragons on my on my GM screens. I Maybe this means Tales of the Valiant GM screen has a dragon. Mm, we do the I new black dragon convince. looks so good i know it's it's, it's like... so evil looking <laughs> um i think my favorite of all time i have two one when wayne reynolds hit the scene as an artist oh yeah and did his landscape for eberron i'll yes. always remember that because there was something about that clash i remember that piece sold and i was so jealous i wanted to buy it um and then i really like the new mork board cathedral screen because they're journal style ah, and yeah, they have yeah, tabs yeah. in the corner where you can swap out art or, or yeah. info. Those are the two I really like, because other than that, I think all my screens have been just pieces of paper. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this and is awesome. And that's fine, right? Yeah. Yeah, this one's great. It's just included with your pledge if you get the slipcover uh, two-book pack. And, uh, I mean, we wanted to do something big yeah. and not something that just, you know, unlocks an add-on or that's a digital-only thing. Like, no, we're printing it and we're slapping it in the box to you if you're supporting Tales of the Valiant. So yeah. I, a lot of people got excited for good reason, but there's a lot of other stuff uh, that we <laughs> have unlocked and that we have been talking about, like the alpha release is coming, right? Yep. And it's around the corner. Around. I know, I know. Sometime in July, looks yeah. like we're gonna have it. Um, so it'll go out to backers right away um, and it's included in the pledge. Yeah. Um, we've got more play tests coming. 
uh, the adventure pack got bigger this week. Like did. in the last couple big, days, with DM a big Dave. name, yeah, yes, no DM space, Dave. DM Dave, right for a a higher level adventure. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that one covers like eleven to twenty is kind of where that's aimed. I'm like, you're covering ten levels of play. Well, how did you fall on the idea of having him do a higher level? Was it his choice or your choice? That was his choice. He looked at what we were doing. Everybody's like, well, it's a new thing, and people will start new campaigns. We want to do like tier one beginner stuff or maybe that sweet spot middle yeah and and he's just like forget it i'm going i'm going, going high level i'm going <laughs> right well. and i'm like why wouldn't you he's he's kind of got that space to himself the other stuff that only caps out at 12 or 13 so, so. for those who don't know who dm dave is because there is a chance of that what is he known right? for like can you name some things that he's done that like that name oh would be God. recognizable um uh, he streams, he has opinions, and I think the publishing piece he's best known for, good lord, I don't know, honestly, because I've read it, and now I, I, I'm blanking on it. Has he worked with us before, or is this what the is first time? Uh, he's reviewed stuff from Cobalt Press. He's gotcha. familiar with Cobalt Press. Um, Monsters I in a Quiet know. Place is the one I can think of. Yeah. I think that's, was that him? And I think he's done like Dungeons and Lairs type stuff. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, uh, we're, we, why are we? Why are we not? Man, we are brain dead today. Is what's going on? We hit a million and our brain are. shut off. That's what happened. Um, That's what happened. He he did stuff through uh, Broadsword Monthly. That's what it was. So adventures, okay. magical items, monsters. Uh, 100 free Patreon stuff that he does. He has a huge Patreon. Legends of uh, Umara, I yes, think yes. is what it is. And then a bunch of resources yes. for Dungeon Masters and the Dungeon Masters Guild. Uh, this this, this yep. guy has been everywhere. He's got a publishing history, and the Patreon is a big part of it, and you're right. I'd forgotten about Broadsword, which is... I, you know, I knew it was a weapon. I was going to say Battle Axe. I was going to say Battle Axe. I know that's not right. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, Broadsword. High level adventures is a is a feat to build, and I know you've done adventure design for ages. Yeah. But making high level yeah, stuff is, sure, is, but is work. It is work. It's hard to do. It's hard to do well uh, because there's more variables, and and the sad reality of it is, like even if you do it well, like I don't know, Return of Vecna kind of stuff, uh, you're you're still talking about stuff that doesn't get hit the table as often, right? Like, you know your audience is smaller, yeah. but they love you for doing high-level stuff because at that point, if you're homebrewing, it's harder. It's a lot harder to homebrew at that I, level. I pick up high-level stuff and file the serial numbers off a lot just to have the stat blocks, the maps, the encounters, uh, because I find past 10th level, it's hard to scale the the challenge to your yep. players, um, which we, we are reworking how just monsters and CRs and encounter building works anyway. Oh my gosh, those um, tools. I've seen some of that come in for Monster Vault. Um, yes, there's a lot of work going so into that. Different. And that's all. I'm excited better. that we're doing that. Yeah, that is better. And I'm excited we're getting a high level one. Um, I'm hoping I'm hoping uh, that we have pre-gens for that because it'd be cool to let people sit down and just play with high level characters. Yes. I don't think we're ready with the high level pre-gens yet. Oh God, no. But I think <laughs> I can say it looks like we're gonna at least be ready with the playtest for a level one to twenty class real soon. <laughs> so that's coming in one of the upcoming playtest packs here. So the playtest uh, packs, we should probably summer. talk about that then. How oh, yeah. do people get a hold of all the playtest packs? Is it people who just support us and join the Kickstarter at any pledge level? Is it are you available to get it afterwards? How are we rolling out the playtest? They play test? are they are free downloads and you can kind of pick them up wherever you want. Like if you go to talesofthevaliant.com, uh the playtest section will give you all the packs, right? The preview packets and characters and yeah, character sheets, all those kind of things. Or you can get them from the Cobalt Press store or you can get them off of Drive through RPG. They're downloadable there. It's pretty much wherever you want cuz they're free resources as we're working through the design questions and getting the community feedback. So those are all freebies. Then there's some playtest packs, two, no, three. We hit a stretch goal for a third Kickstarter exclusive playtest pack. 
and those uh, those play tests are for classes in Tales of the Valiant that are how to put it um, that are we don't have Warlock as, and Bard. Yeah, like Warlock and Bard are going out in August, yep. and I believe Druid and Ranger are coming in July. I don't know if that's been announced yet. I should probably shut my my big trap. Um, <laughs> There's some more sometime between now and December. Um, yes. See, we're actually continuing the packs because we want that feedback, yeah. and and some of them are um, new lineages, new heritages, yeah. uh, and new monsters. The, the right? real so foundation is that change to me. Like when I built the iconic stuff, the the Valiant for this like preview stuff. Um, yeah. I noticed how much the idea of of, of having building blocks for like, I want to be a dwarf, but I'm Grove, so I can have a climb speed. It changes the way you fundamentally build a character. Like it yep. really, really does. And finally, it's still simple. It's not over the top. You're not, it's not like a thousand feet that you're picking, but nope. the option to be different than the dwarf to your left and right is very easy. Yeah, um, and, and then what I the love about it, on it and the talent changes them one more time. It changes it one more time, right. But the that initial interaction between a lineage and your your heritage is, for me, it strikes a beautiful design balance between, I just want to play a traditional dwarf because I'm playing a tabletop RPG for the first time. Like, right, it, it supports somebody who wants to play the, the classic yeah. woodland elf, the classic down in the stony halls dwarf. And then for someone who's been playing for a long time, it's like, no, nah, I played that. I played that. I yeah. played that. I played all the archetypes. It's like, well, and have you played a dwarf a with a grove? Right. But you say, well, how about a uh, an elf with a seafaring heritage? Or what about a dwarf with a grove heritage? And yeah. all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, I haven't played that. Yeah, a dwarf with a grove heritage that is a rogue. So their ability to do B and E is so much better than it was before. Um, without yeah. a spell, without slippers of spider climb, you can just yep. do it because you grew up like Tarzan. <laughs> you were adopted by, well, a woodland Edder tribe. caps. Yeah, uh, it's Spider-Man as a dwarf hey, rogue. Hey, yes. I didn't say that out loud. Everybody builds no. Batman. We all know it. Everyone builds yes. Batman. Self-contained, <laughs> self-sufficient, with a penny worth to give them their gear. Yeah. So I, I, it, yeah. it's crazy, like what you can actually build doing that. Um, and we do. That's a really good question, Wilson. They asked. Uh, we hit the mill. Do we yes. have the stretch goals? We weren't sure we were going to make it. So, yeah, we had some ideas we're kicking around. And um, and we'll see. The funny thing is, we talked about this a week ago. And we're like, yeah, we should get those graphics together. We have a plan. We we think if we go over a mill. And then uh, Origins hit. And everyone's at the convention. And <laughs> it's like half the team is watching the Kickstarter. The other half is at Origins. Yeah. And yes, we have, I think, at least thought about these goals. But uh, do we know what marks they're going to be at, at least, if we don't know what I they are? I think they would be at 1.1 and 1.2. That would be my guess as well. I'm right. curious as to what they I don't even know what they are. Um, right. So I'm curious like, as to what they are. There was some discussion. And it needs to be locked down, so people need to get out of the booth at Origins and answer their email. So, so. 6 p.m. today, maybe we'll find out. We'll uh, find out. Central Standard. But, you know, we've hit, like, <laughs> 20 stretch goals already I know. in this project. I know. I know. Um, the other one that I'm all excited about is the How to Speak Draconic one uh, and the Guide to the Labyrinth, which are both way more lore, flavor, setting-y stuff than mechanical the mechanic stuff. mechanic stuff, yeah. Yeah. Um, but they're both kind of exciting. I, you know, how to speak draconic is a constructed language. And I don't, I'm a great big language geek. Go figure writing, design, world yeah. building, right? And being able to say things like, well, I don't know, you know, I have wares to sell in draconic is um, is delightful. And we're, we're just figuring out, um, you know, how to, how to put phonetic marks or how to put to put pronunciations in the most accessible way in mm -hmm. this document. Well, the, for yeah. those who are at the AMA, he we definitely need to know how to say backpack chicken. 
That yes. definitely needs to be <laughs> something yeah. needs to happen. I I'm uh, I'm happy we've been cobalts. We're cobalts. We're gonna get some, right? That's gonna be a playable yeah. thing. Yeah. Um I Absolutely. do we have any other um lineages or backgrounds that we haven't talked about that you want to leak that are coming up that are official, you know you're doing them? I think at least at the playtest level, we're Kobolds, yeah, we're doing it. Everybody wants us to do it. We yeah. want to do it. Of course we're doing it. Yeah. Um, there was a surprising result out of an early playtest feedback kind of poll where uh, we said, so, you know, of these 12 classic fantasy races, what's your favorite? What's your last favorite? Vote oh. for some. And halflings were popular and gnomes weren't. Really? And for a while. Yeah, I was shocked. I'm like, gnomes, really? Not that popular. So for a while we kicked around. Well, what if we didn't have gnomes? And then you know he just said, "No, nah, you gotta can have you gnomes." Get rid of them, like yeah. Yeah, you, know, you can't get rid of them entirely. I mean, they're obnoxious and kobolds hate them, and there's a long-term rivalry. But I don't think we're gonna do them dirty by keeping them out of the game or saying writing them out Stop of. Stop digging into our caves. Right? Just leave us alone, people. <laughs> Eat our backpack chicken. <laughs> Eat our backpack chicken. <laughs> right? Like our delicious, so... our delicious Girl Scout backpack chicken. <laughs> I think we're looking at short people as a theme for an upcoming play scale test. scouts. The scale scouts. Weird little gnomes, uh, weird little halflings. I think that stuff is is heavily under discussion uh, for how we're gonna treat those. So maybe see something on that in the not too distant future. Thanks for the raid quest line. We're talking Kickstarter. We hit our mill today. Yes. We have Wolfgang on and we're, we're talking our mill. Um, speaking of which, since we just had this come in, in the background, the thing that we, I guess as a group, we're like, why have we not talked about this? And I'll, I'll bring it on camera since we have our, our lovely image for it. There are oh, two yeah. levels that we, oh, if yeah. you really want the best deal, like that's what you're looking for. We have our $48 one and yes. then we have our $99 one. So let's talk the $48 one first. It's worth $109. Even after we yes. made this graphic, you were talking about some things that we forgot to include. Is that well, for this we, as well or just the 99? No, it's it's actually there's a third adventure that's being added into the $48 pledge. So you have three adventures just out of the gate, ready to run by Cobalt Press. Uh, and the other one I think that wasn't included on that tab was the Guide to the Labyrinth which is oh. sort of a preview of the setting for Tales of the Valiant, or a setting, let's say. We expect most people will will be playing their, their home game, right? right. But if Especially you want to play the... Yeah. But uh, the Guide to the Labyrinth, then, is, is sort of a setting piece, and everybody who backs the Kickstarter, of course, can can send us their setting, and we'll publish, like, the best 50. Mm -hmm. We're not going to own the rights. We're, we're just going to publish it to share it with the universe and say, hey... Here's 50 cool worlds um, that other people are playing and maybe yeah. drop some of that into yeah. your game. Anyway, so those things are also included in the $48 level with um, you know, all the other things that we've talked about, like the alpha release, which is a hundred and something pages long, how to speak draconics in there. Um, I guess the one adventures are in there. Six, I think is what it is. Right yeah. Now. So, I mean, the $48 pledge is just a stupidly good, uh, all digital, all the bits, um, kind of yeah. pledge. Yeah. And I, I can't say, you know, I, I don't think we've ever had a better deal, honestly. <laughs> it's sort of the all in one package, just start your campaign rolling. Yeah, and like really dive in, learn what's different with TOV. Cause I can tell you after one episode live for Valiant Soil, 5e doesn't feel like just 5e anymore just with the one through five yep. preview pack like i know everyone reads it and they go eh, you know i guess it's, you know I'm, i can't wait to see more but i can tell you just playing the one to five with a little bit of the alpha stuff that we've leaked into yes. it it is not the same it is very no. different um, it's it's a different experience i think in a lot of ways people are gonna figure that out in play because it doesn't leap off the page unless you're i mean it might leap off the page for a couple of things if you're looking at yeah. lock system build a, right? build a couple characters and i think your brain really characters. changes on how and, it and functions. you'll say oh it's 5e but it's got this and this and, and yes it changes the play experience in wonderful ways so uh by all means take that 
Tales of the Valiant free preview. It's right there on the Kickstarter mm -hmm. side. It's up on all the store, right? Like it's freebie. Just look at it, make yeah. a character. And for you who are looking to stream it or do anything with it, we put out a creator kit that has, yes. a re trust me, because I touched them all, so many overlay pieces. And it has just a really get started as we call it, uh, the the Cobalt version. And then the Swobald version is the PSD Unlock it, do what you want. We just ask that you leave our Cobalt Press and our Valiant on there so you can support us that way, but they're free. They cost nothing. You can get them on the Tales of the Valiant site they're right beautiful. now. beautiful. They turn out great. Amber gave us a baseline. I took them to like as far as I could in the timeline. So take those, and honestly, if you're playing at home, there's some really good pieces in there just to pull to like make printed pages for your characters to give them handouts and full things like that. But then, that's a $48. That's then, the 48. Then we get into like, it's I think less it's than the cost of a hardcover. It's the, a lot. The most, yeah, it's the hardcover from the 80s. The yes. most ridiculous price, which is our $99 one. Yes. $246 is what it's priced at. We're doing it at 99 for the Kickstarter. Like after that, that's not, that's not the game. Forget anymore. it. No, it, it, it ends on Friday. It's all yeah. over then. We're not offering that deal again, no, ever. No, this no. Is now, it's not happening. It. <laughs> this is now and that is all. Um, well, I mean, we looked at that number. It was originally 129 and we're like, no, we want everybody to have a crack at it. And so we, we carved another chunk of margin off it and just said you know yeah. we want everybody in we want it to be a screamingly good deal and people have figured that out very quickly yeah but even on top of it's a good price for two books and a slip case and a dm screen yep then there's everything else that's coming in right like you can start playing next month with the alpha release yeah uh you got all those adventures the how to speak draconic a chance to put your own world in front of the gaming like it's all the same things that are in the 48 dollar level on the digital side mm. plus the gm screen print and the print books print stuff, yeah for an extra you know 41 yeah 51 for bucks. the for the price of a normal set of two books <laughs> you can get all this and more. Uh, so I'm glad we did this. I mean, this is us going into, we're going to be first party publishing. We're making yep. our own system. We're doing our own thing. We've been doing this forever. And then yes. we went, you know what? We also want everyone to join us. So how do we do that? Let's let's cut some of the margin out. Let's let's make sure that they can get it at an affordable price because we, we know at Cobalt Press and marketing has talked about this a lot. And I'm sure editorial has, most of the company just... A lot of people are picking up new games all the time since January. Yeah. What do I do? And people are spending, and we didn't want to have people come in at $246 for this. No, 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 no. I mean, if you want to, go for it. Oh, yeah. Get if the add-ons. There's a tip Get bucket. the limited edition. Yeah. <laughs> you can tip, but, but we wanted you to be able to get in and get everything in PDF and print format in an affordable thing. Um, in 30 days that leech gives you your paycheck like ah, i gotta wait for my paycheck we tried to do our best to figure all that crap out as well yep and it's a lot and it's a lot it of is. stuff it's We're a great deal we're gonna roll out a bunch of it this fall yeah. uh you know some of these adventures are playable with the alpha release that came up in the editorial meeting the other day i didn't day. even They're know like, that yes there's some of the first adventures uh oh. should be out mm, i don't want to put a date on it summer by early gen con fall. or yeah, september probably there. well we're running adventures at gen con so guess which ones yeah, right like <laughs> that's yeah. that's awesome um do you uh <laughs> i know we haven't talked about the labyrinth a lot uh it is not no. something we've talked about the concept sure. is is this multiverse that connects everything together what you play what we play what jeremiah plays what susan plays it connects them all Yep. But we want people to submit. We don't own it. We're just giving you a raise of like, hey, thanks for joining us. We love these. Try them at your table. Do you have anything you would like to see submitted for a world that you haven't seen in your years oh, as a publisher? Oh, wow. Like, do you have a secret love that you're like, I really wish somebody would put this out? Uh, you know, I, that's such a great question because, of course, half the fun of getting pitches for a new monster a new spell a new world is the oh i've never seen this thing before right. and i've got my own preferences and like we're gonna have four or five judges basically looking at every world a backer submits uh double blind their names won't be on those things yeah. so we can't you like know we did for the spells yeah 
you know, if uh, if some big shot freelancer shows up and sends us their world pitch, we won't know it, right? right? We'll just read the text and go, wow, that's really cool. But I think what I want out of these things is focus, because you've only got a few hundred words, right? Focus on what are those shining things that make it different from every other fantasy ever. Like, I don't want to see Lord of the Rings again. Right, I don't even want to see again. like. Right, well, I mean, I love it, but <laughs> I don't want to get Amazon for it. Yeah, <laughs> but I don't want to see like, oh, it's a Harry Potter kind of thing. Like, I don't want to see a thing that I already yeah. know. Yeah, and and I don't know what I don't know. Like, what I want is somebody to wow me with. Oh, I never thought of that. Or, like, do you want oh, sci-fi? Do you want like? Do you want? I think like you a can go, modern fantasy. Like, is there something that you haven't you seen? You should go nutty, right? Like this. At the idea Are of you the talking like disc world level nutty? Maybe hitchhiker's I mean, guide maybe, nutty. I think it's hard to be that funny in the space you've got. <laughs> but you know, if you do say, "Hey, this portion of the labyrinth is a, a hollow asteroid inhabited by gardener gnomes." I'm gonna say, well, that's an unusual premise, but I've never seen it before. Oh, but it's crash land um, in the middle of the nine hells, and they're a refuge for all the people who escape torture. Right? Like, you don't have to be wacky necessarily. It doesn't have to be like Dark Sun level or Spelljam level or even, yeah. you know, Rune Quest level Bronze Age technology. It can be whatever you love, but it needs to be sharply focused, right? Like, you can't yeah. describe a 12 nation set of mercantile princes no. and and expect it to carry through you kind of got to say it's the mongol empire if it were run by elves or something right like give me elevator pitch you yeah, want that elevator me pitch me yeah. no and, and I'm, it's hard i'm not saying do that to wolfgang at <laughs> gen con because i can't I, our dinner would be really weird if he goes remember when you said to tell everyone to give me an elevator pitch well, <laughs> but why they kept showing up at the booth all day i was curious as if you had anything you were looking for or you love if there's a little heart string that, that yeah someone there talk. are things but the problem is if i spill yeah about what i'm secretly hoping for like everybody knows some of what my personal subjective like like i like an empire full of ghouls that's cool sure or i like clockwork stuff yeah people know that but like don't pitch me those. Cobalt Press has already done that stuff. Pitch me the thing that you are excited about, and that generally leads to the better pitch. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> Wilson says, don't worry about it. You'll have to take stairs everywhere to escape all the elevator pitches. <laughs> <laughs> it's good for my cardio. Your cardio, your core workout will be great for these months of sitting and doing TOV. Yeah, right? Best thing I ever bought was the standing desk. That was the best thing I ever yes. bought. Yes. So, yeah, it's good for you. Yeah. Work that core. <laughs> <laughs> so out of the Kickstarter, is there anything else that we should touch base on uh, before we maybe a answer some questions to people? Is there anything else from the TOV that you would like to, to touch on that you think is big? Like for me, my question has been, I don't think a lot of people know what Dib is. Oh, yeah, they don't. Uh, sure. So the Return of Dib adventure. I'll scroll down. Uh, down yeah is a we've already funded that, that stretch goal it's one of the adventures you get uh with any pledge um uh, at the minimum level or or above and it's it's the goblin oh man i wish i had my copy right here um, is it in your room somewhere it, it it exists somewhere in my room you don't know where Dib it is is, oh, okay. <laughs> is the goblin who who has an indomitable fortress. He started in the Prepared series on the Cobalt Press blog as a goblin who was ruler of an overturned wagon, and that was his fortress. And he I'm defended sorry, it what? against all comers. Yeah, like a, a wagon. I know, I cart. hear you. I just didn't uh -huh. know that either. It was turned upside down, the wheels went up, and and like there's a ladder and he there's had a, a He had a blanket fort made of a cart. Yes. And the first adventure was invade the blanket fort and uh yeah, it's 700k. There we go. Right? Oh my and, lord. And he was a popular character because he's spunky and he defended his home and he's, he's a fun goblin and the art was nice. And I'm like, yeah, it's a fun one night, one shot adventure. And the whole prepared collection was all one shots. Um, and so we did a second one and a third one. And by the time we get to the third one, um, you know, Dib is causing bigger chaos and has more resources. But uh, the premise is still there's a goblin run amok, go deal with it. 
Um, and I, I love him to bits. He's one of the characters that people have played at conventions over the years. Aww. I think this character's been around for five or six years now, and we just trot him out, and people are like, that's great! Where do I get it? And uh, we said, well, we're putting it in TOV. How did we not uh, put a map in cities and towns where the center of it was a wagon? How did we not do that? I don't know. I guess it's just not... That's like Diablo with a cow level. There's no cow level, and there always is. Like, we definitely should have an upturned wagon on a map once right? a year somewhere. We should hide it in there and yes, get an Easter egg. Yes, yes. Well, maybe, Little maybe that upturned wagon. chicken's laying out in front of it. Um, right? <laughs> so is Little this tokens. new one going to be... It's for levels one and two. It's a return. Are we yep. just dressing it up for TOV? Are we doing something brand new? We're dressing it up for TOV, and we're including a new, slightly higher level version um, that I believe is coming in the prepared collection. Mm. I think you can pick it up in hardcover as part of the prepared expanded collection this summer. Because <laughs> everybody want we, we did them in soft cover for years, and people are like, yeah, yeah, but they get beat up. I like a hard cover. The prepareds so are awesome. Like, I had not read yeah, yeah. more than one of them before I had started, and we dove through a bunch of them. Actually, Valiant Soil is built on uh, Campaign Builder right. Two and the Spiral concept, and we I built it right. with the audience, and that's what we're using to run the show. So like, yeah. the idea that that that's coming back is Dib. What class is Dib? Do we do we know? I think he's a warlord. Really? Which is going to get the fourth edition people coming after me. He's a fighter of some kind. He and is he's got a, a rogue battle friend. bard that we haven't built yet. And <laughs> I, I don't know what his TOV stats are, but I look forward to finding out. <laughs> uh, like maybe it's just straight up goblin captain, uh, goblin commander, goblin something. Uh, he may get his own stats. Um, oh, 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 he just might be a monster. Yeah, he might be. <laughs> or he might be an NPC with a special move, like hide an overturned cart or, you know, resist siege. And he, if, if you beat him, does he treat? Does he teach you the talents of hiding in a cart? You can take the talent. <laughs> Possibly, yes. So we also, It would be fun. We also talked about at the 900K, and I don't think I've discussed this yet, is the Mossbeard Mill, Trouble Mossbeard yes. Mill. What is this Ooh. going to be for the 2 to 3 level? Which means right, that'll so be a playable is, thing early too, which is nice. It will also be fairly early. It's currently in design. We've seen like a sketch. I've seen a sketch of the cover. Um, it is a little more investigative. Like Caverns of the Spore Lord, that first level adventure, or mm -hmm. Dib, are really just sort of come to grips with the rules, make a new character, run around some caverns, have a good time. Sure. Um, Trouble at Mossbeard Mill is a, has some of that, right? There are mm. combats, um, but there's also an investigation storyline and a mystery. Something's going on around the old mill and it ain't good. Um, and so that will take you to level three. Yes, it's two to three. And, yeah. yeah, it might bump you to four at the very end. Um, but it's meant to show off some of the non-combat exploration as well, because there's woodlands around it. Sure. Um, it's good for, for wilderness-y things. You basically get you out of the dungeon cavern mode uh, and, and show you other, other things, right, gotcha. if you're a new player. So I like the mystery in it. I think it's a really nice adventure, but um, we're still writing it. So yeah. it's based on... And that's a Cobalt Press ideas. adventure, right? That is a Cobalt Press adventure, just like Spore Lord, just like Dib. So there are three adventures. Nice. Um, maybe, is there a fourth one? Hidden Tomb of Narga? I don't know if that one, I don't know. Maybe I we haven't announced that. Three. Well, so with, there's three. Well, there's three. For now, that's what it is. Maybe if there's four, guess what? You lucked out. There's a bonus. Um, is there a fourth one at a million dollar level? I, right. I may have been so excited by the DM screen that I actually forgot the actual <laughs> four. Adventure hero. I'm so like I did we did we at the million dollar mark? Yes, hidden tomb of Nargod, levels three to four. Holy crap. I knew I'm it so was excited in here. about the million. You're like, I know we have other work to do, but my brain is shut off for the I day. Would, it's the four <laughs> four panel GM screen. So actually you get you get that adventure too, which is I'm just gonna say undead crawl and leave it at that because Ooh. it's too early to say exactly what shape it will take, but good lord, the the notes on it are pretty great. I, I I want it to gel beautifully 
and scare everyone to pieces. Gotcha. So, so we got 15 minutes left. Um, I'll, let's take yeah, a couple take questions. questions. Uh, hit a cue before, put a cue before your question. Um, I have one from earlier, um, an earlier one to start us off, which is they wanted to know, is Wolfgang going to write an adventure for this? Yes. The answer is yes. I'm writing it now. I had to create a location in the labyrinth for it and it won't be out till next year okay that but i am writing it's good uh someone asked uh, do we have a stretch goals for 1.5 mil look if we hit 1.5 mil <laughs> in 51 hours i i i don't know i don't know what the stretch goal is i don't, I don't even know what the 1.1 and 1.2 is yet we, we we don't have one for 1.5 but i am sure that uh, the editorial team, the design team, and or the we'll sales team will all out. have their own ideas. I don't think we're going to go there, but we'll yeah, sell we'll it's... sell Cobalt Chipotle backpack chicken. Um, mm, I have yes. no idea what the it's going to be. All your material we'll is rocks. hand delivered. We'll sell hot yes. rocks for your backpack chicken. <laughs> we will give you a pet rock <laughs> in every box. Pet rock just says Dib was here. Um, Dib was here. Oh. Uh, so, I mean, that's... <laughs> it's always nice to dream. We dared to dream that we'd hit a million, and here we are. So, yeah. I mean, my my dream's made real here on this project. Yeah. I, now we just have to deliver two monster books. We got it. I'm not worried about yeah, it. Yeah, we're good. It's coming so, along. So, um, yeah, so that was one. Um, is there anyone else here? Let's see here. You're saying a few meddling kids shouldn't look for clues at the old mill? I mean, yo, uh, do you want those kids? I, you know, if there's a, a mask ripped off at the end of this adventure, I'm going to say, I think it's been done. But <laughs> uh, but if there's an illusion that's dispelled at the end, I see that would be, that would be more high fantasy. Yeah, <laughs> it is a little bit those meddling kids, but... Uh, Blue painted wagon. Mm-hmm. Little, what is it? Was it a green flower on the side or a leaf? Well, I can't remember what the heck was on the other no, side. No, the Scooby Doo, that, that, that gang, there was never any real supernatural, right? It was always. Let's be someone... honest, they were bad at their job. <laughs> they. Scooby was the that... only one who was any good. Actually, Scrappy was the only one that was any good at his job. Oh my gosh. No. <laughs> uh, but anyway, if you wanted to play that <laughs> scenario and make those characters, I think you probably oh, you could. Probably could, yeah. Any other questions from chat? Have we hit everything? Are, are we? Are, you can't tell us we're so good. We've answered all your questions, and we might have forty nine oh, minutes. Time to just start spilling the beans like mad. Do you have anything to spill? Me. Yeah, but I, I, I'll need a question to prompt me. Oh, question to prompt you. What do I have? I have a whole list over here. Uh, there was some oh, others. Did. Yeah, oh, I have my, oh yeah, I collect all of our ones. You have your personal list. No, no, no. These are from other shows that we've done. Oh, I just collect other them from shows. questions oh. and comments online and things like that. Um, alpha, is there something that people should be yes. looking forward to in the alpha pack? That we oh didn't see the preview like what's the big thing besides i said spells but what's the big thing people yes. should be looking forward to that's like a new rule right. change that's tov so, centric four base classes and their spells a ton of monsters and i don't know what the final count was maybe 40 or 50 monsters mm -hmm. the complete rules of play rules of spell casting like the alpha is included for the Kickstarter backers, and it's 100% a playable game at that point. Yeah. Which is why it's like 160. We'll see where the page count winds up. <laughs> but we keep putting new cool stuff in there, yeah. right? New lineages, um, the equipment chapter. Good Lord. I think that's right? my favorite part, especially weapons now. Yes. Weapons now have There's... a little more pizzazz to them. Right? So it's you can roll a die for damage. That's still part of the game. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's there. We didn't get rid of that. Uh, no, it's not gone. But. That was one of my favorite things. Anything else in there you can think of that people should be looking forward to that are like new rules changes for Alpha that like I'll should be excited tell about? You, I don't want to get into the rules changes because they're still kind of tweaking based on some Finalizing. of the playtests. Like the, the, fine, the nice thing about the Alpha is we, we put up front we're gonna be rolling in changes that came from playtest, but only yeah. the most important ones, right? right. Like not every every little tiny like thirty-two thing, stat points, not thirty-one. 
Yes. Yeah. That's in there. Um, some changes to the monster stat blocks. How? Like, uh, pretty sure it's gonna be dark vision and not night vision, right? Things that people asked for that were pretty consistent. So we're gonna do that. So all of those things are gonna bring it more in line with what the community wants, and and some things that you know we missed or, um, or we had a change of heart on something based on more and more play. Yeah. But the other thing that's in the alpha that I think will get people excited is there's a whole lot of beautiful layout. Like the preview is nice, but it's smaller. It's not the same, yeah. It's not the same. Like there's art for every monster. So if you like that black dragon art, get ready for a whole lot of monster yes. art in the alpha. My it's favorite monster sweet. that I don't even know if it's in there. Our art for the doppelganger is one of my favorite things. Yes. And then yes. the little, uh, I don't know, I don't, I don't remember the name of it, but they're like, they look like, to me, remember the Ghostbuster slime packs that you get the little, yes. Dip, and you pull the monster out? Those those transparent creatures that we have, those guys. Yes. Super excited to use those in a game because they're so different. But I don't know if yes. those are in preview, though. I, I don't think they are. I can't swear whether those are in the alpha, but I will tell you, um, while we're building on the fifth edition uh, Creative Commons stuff, there's also a bunch of new things that no one's ever seen before yeah. in the monster section. Well, consider the fact um, that you have descriptions now. Yes. Yeah. That's huge. Like you get actual descriptions for the monsters now. You you didn't get that with the, with the old license stuff. No, um, no, no. There was a question from I think three shows ago. I want to say it was Frog Princess uh, that was mm -hmm. asking when are we going to see more on uh, the CFR stuff and how oh, that's going to work yeah well some of that's being shared with partner companies and some of it's sort of behind the scenes work and the thing about the cfr stuff is we got to finish play test yeah. before we can say here it is here's the document right like go forth and and go nuts um but it is on the schedule it's on the radar it's got staff assigned to both uh, you know editorial mm -hmm. and and just getting it laid out and and prepped to share with the world um it's probably looking like a fall thing where we have something locked okay the cfr um and we're gonna keep putting out play tests and changing things so it, it's premature you can't to ground say, it until it's ready basically yeah and the play test like the last packet we talked about publicly is in august i think mm-hmm uh maybe september so we're at that point gonna take all that feedback collate it and say okay here's enough for the cfr we're not going to change so much from this point forward um and we have gotten uh, this wave of community response that that will have addressed most of what people want out of that document to build their sure. own adventures um and frankly like that adventure the partner adventure bundle 10 adventures in that um those partners all kind of need the material that's going to be cfr like and, and sort of a publisher um baseline so they can say yeah i can point to this monster i can point to that monster it's all here yeah. plus a bunch of new things um and i think we're we're looking pretty good at uh at cfr content but yeah it is sort of second tier we got to get the tov base yeah, if you don't have the skeleton, you sure as hell can't put flesh and bone, you know, together. So uh, the next one, and this is actually a really good question. This is from, I think it's Vreldi. Vreldi, um, will the GM screen have a PDF version? Which I think is actually very important. For those who are running online, oh. it's great to have the ability to scroll through it right. as a side piece. Like, oh, what is that notes? Because it's a quick reference chart. Is that something Super that we're going to see as a PDF? I just do it landscape. We all got excited. To. Yeah, we got all excited about the print version, and I don't think anybody has really said, "Gosh, we got to do it in PDF." Well, if there's a print version, product, there's yeah. a P there is at least an InDesign file that can be turned into it. Yeah, there is, a and PDF I think um, we didn't like the last time we did a, a GM screen was for Midgard, and that was like in 2012 or 2015, right? It was a while back, and nobody really said, "I got to have a PDF. I just want the the." heavy cardstock version sure um so that's a great question i gotta go back and say 
we are doing a PDF, aren't we? Right, right. I didn't think um, about this, but we are, right? In the excitement of it. Um, yeah. I, I would love it because that's what I would use for streaming because I just I put my PDF in a small window at the bottom so I can just scroll through it at the bottom of my window um, yes. on my 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 vertical and then I mean, it's just, it just makes sense beautifully condensed information design right? yeah yeah it is it's it's taking the morsels it's the ingredients that you need to run the game uh, yep. to make your cake you know bake your cake the other question we have here is uh have any translation deals been negotiated even though perhaps not announced or unannounceable have we done anything there for translation are... stuff yet yes we have two languages that are in final stages of negotiation there's so no iconic and what <laughs> yes that would be the coolest edition ever uh draconic and klingon of course <laughs> starting out the gate and then we'll be following with uh no no uh we we have two major major european languages i guess uh and we would love to have a couple more but those deals um will be announced uh the minute we can yeah but in all of those cases you know they need us to hand them the final english and then they need six months or a year to bring a translation out so those are a longer down the road thing, but Cobal Press is currently published it in I want to say six languages. Yeah, like we're in French, Spanish, German, Italian, Chinese, and Russian. Six languages other than English, I should. Yeah, say. that's that's a lot. Yeah, I mean, and not every book not is in every but... language. No, and but it's... we have those we have those partnerships, and what that means, right, is Cobalt Press can go to those people and say, "Do you want this?" And they'll say yes or no. Yep. Um, and and two of those six have already said, oh, heck yeah, let's talk terms. Um, and I don't know about the other four, right? Well, when we get closer to the print time, I think in delivery, we'll start seeing more of that news come out for sure. Uh, yeah. the, the last question I have with only two minutes left for us, I, I have that I think is going to be... Uh, I would love to see happen. Uh, this was when we first announced Project Black Flag. It was a comment. I was, I've was i been trying to find it in YouTube. But someone said, will we see this at Target? <laughs> oh, that's my new dream. That's my new dream. See it at Target. Like, can it be in the gaming section at Target as a book? Is that a feasible thing? And my thing is, is like, I've seen books I've never heard of there for gaming. I don't see why that wouldn't be a feasible thing to do. Um, yeah. I mean, they have a much bigger game section at mass market retail now mm -hmm. than they did five years ago, certainly than they did 10 years ago. But a lot of it is, um, you know, board games, Settlers of Catan. Um, yeah. I don't know. Apples to Apples, card games, Munchkin, something like that. Right. It, yeah. Um, role playing games is tougher. It's a tougher ask to put it out at a mass marketplace but man i would fight for that maybe when I we do a box set that. for for like beginners box set or something like that in the future that yes. would be something you could see there that's kind of the right place for that because a lot mm -hmm. of people are just strolling by and hell this is how i got into the hobby right i walked through a, a hobby game store i saw a yes. box with a dragon on it and i'm like i want one of those yeah, that that's that's it. exactly how it was. I mean, well, mine was so, I stole my uncle's out of his attic, but yeah, very similar. Pretty much the same thing. <laughs> I was shopping in somebody else's house as a child. <laughs> but yes, that's a wonderful idea. Um, we certainly would love to see that happen. And uh, if it does, we'll talk about it here. Yeah, I, I think that would be great to see in big, like that's the dream eventually so that everybody can see what it is because we're in a very small circle. Like this this industry is not that big coming from other industries that I've worked in, but you want to be able to hit some of the other industries that are adjacent and kind of overlap. Your your video games, your board gamers, your your families looking for things to do together. Like that's the dream, I think, in long term. Oh yeah. Um, and the million was this dream and then we got that now, my last question from you, just because it was before the show, as we close this out, is you said you had a secret other goal. Oh, yes. Well, you know, a million is all very nice, but Cobalt can't count that high. So my secret Cobalt other goal count that high. is a number I can count to, which is I really want 10,000 backers by yeah. Friday night. And I don't know. 
I think it's it's a reach. We need another thousand people to show up. More than that. Fit, to make four, ten or more than that. Fourteen hundred. Fourteen hundred people 14, to show up in the next 40, forty-eight. 40, I would love ten thousand backers, and it's just stupid numerology. Roll the meter. Lots of zeros, but I, you know. I, Yes, the money will enable us to print this, make it lush, make it beautiful, right. hand out all these extra stretch goals and extra rewards for the people who supported it. Yeah. But I also want that number to be um, to be just a big number of people who are like, yeah, I'll give it a it's, shot. So the thing is, is is what I think for people buying in uh, and, yes. and joining us and who have raised the flag with us to start and are running with the shield now is... 10,000 backers means that's a base of players for a community to start with. Oh, yeah. And then Gen Con will increase those... that and so on and so on. Our, and this weekend, we have a... Isn't this weekend a community play? I think so, yeah. Yeah. So, so 10,000 backers, call it 40,000 players, right? 50,000... It, so it's a really nice community. It's huge by Cobalt standards. Yeah. And, it will just continue to grow. 10,000 cobalts? Those gnomes are not digging in our caves anymore. <laughs> no way. And maybe we can finally push back some wizards too. Um, so like, maybe uh, that. I think that's a great thing. Like the 10,000 would be cool for me as someone who worked in community play a lot. And I believe, I think you did community play for a while too with some of the other companies. Yep. Um, the larger community group you have, they're like a really cool core foundation that know your system, love your yes. system use the product, teach other people about it, and they become kind of ambassadors for the brand to a Yeah, point. yeah. And they go no, out and like get the, people playing. They get people excited, they get people playing, and that's kind of sharing the joy of the hobby with the yeah. wider community, so. Yeah. Yes, 100%. Well, Wolfgang, we did it. We hit a mill. Yeah. Cobalt's first yeah. mill. Amazing Woo. people backing. I am excited. We have 50 hours left, and then are we taking any time off after the Kickstarter finishes? Because I know there's some back end stuff that has to process in yeah, a week or two. The, the weekend, or maybe a week or two, we're quieter. A little quieter. Um, and then, but, we, then Gen Con's around the corner. Gen Con's, yeah, it's right around the corner. So let's so. make that announcement now. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, we found out today. Uh, that when you go to Gen Con, if you play at one of the tables, uh, we yes. are getting miniatures made from Eldridge Foundry for our art, for like our, our main characters' concepts. And they are making miniatures around them and they look awesome. And if you play at the Tales of the Valiant tables, I think we see like 120 tables worth of Tales of the Valiant, you get to mm -hmm. walk away with your character's mini. Yes. So if you show I'm up, so sit happy. down to play a game, that, that miniature that's at the table, you take home with you. That's like our our little like thank you love letter for joining us at Gen Con and, and giving TOV its chance. And you get to walk away with a, these models. Look, as someone who painted professionally, they look really good. Um, yes. So Eldritch Foundry, really great work. And they yeah. help make this possible yeah so, and they're cranking yeah. out fast like this is a quick turnaround i'm super excited maybe you'll see a little bit of it here on chats there's something in july that i might do but if you're gonna be gen con um and those miniatures i'm assuming are gonna be something people can pick up in the future as part of our line oh, yeah. and buy but you get a freebie when you walk away from the table so i think it's fair to say that you know from cobalt to all the people back in the kickstarter thank you so much for helping us hit this million I, uh, I, yes. we were like, is this possible at the beginning oh of this God. Kickstarter? It has been a journey. I think like, it was. Like all Kickstarters, <laughs> they had that slow down, and then all of a sudden, Steam picks back up. Um, thank you for joining us for Cobalt Chats today. As always, everyone, we are here every Wednesday at, what is it, 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Uh, Central Standard. And then, of course, tonight, we will be back with valiant soil 6 p.m central yes. standard time 7 p.m eastern amazing cast first episode is over on youtube right now if you have enough time to watch it and get caught up it is a lot of fun and tonight's episode is called that sinking feeling if you, you've watched the first episode <laughs> you know what it is thank you so much for joining us wolfgang say bye to the audience Bye, everybody, and thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Uh, if you are watching this on YouTube afterwards, let me say thank you for joining us with all these Cobalt Chats through the journey of Kickstarter and this amazing, amazing thing that you've done with us by raising the flag. Uh, on uh, this side over here, there's going to be a video to watch. It's probably going to be the first episode of Valiant Soil. 
That's my guess. I don't know. YouTube, do your magic. And on this side, there's going to be a bell to click. I'm trying to get us to 10,000 by the end of the year. We're almost at seven for our followers, so click the bell, turn on all notifications, as we're going to be getting streaming over there more frequently, because the quality is better. And if anything breaks, it just seems it together for me. Thank you so much for joining us. I'll see you tonight. And uh, be bold, be brave, be valiant. Bye, everybody.